Hey, this is Mr. Morrison, and today we are going to be talking about samples and populations. And a good example of samples and population would be one of the biggest TV events of the whole entire year, which is the Super Bowl. And this year, uh, for the Super Bowl in Indianapolis, they will be paying $3.5 million for every 30 seconds commercial you see and why do you think that advertisers pay so much money because so many people are watching the game but how do they really know how many people are watching the Super Bowl how do they figure out that there's all these people watching it well what they do is they take a survey or a sample of a small group of people they can't ask everyone if they watch the Super Bowl it'd be too hard to go around the country and ask every single person did you watch the Super Bowl did you watch the Super Bowl so they just take a sample which is a smaller group of people, so they might ask a couple thousand people and then apply what they know about those couple thousand to everyone, which would be the population. So they apply what they find out from the smaller group to the larger group. The smaller group who you ask as a sample, the bigger group who you apply it to would end up being the population. So the definitions of those are sample is a small group who you're actually asking or in some cases observing. And the population is who you care about as a whole. It's a whole group. It's everyone. It could be everyone in the school or the country or the world, just depending on the different scenarios. So those are samples and populations. So in this next example, if you survey 50 students in the school to see who their favorite <coughs> wink, wink, nod, nod math teacher is, Mr. Marston, in the school is, who would be the sample? Well, the sample in this case is who you ask. So the sample would be the 50 students who you surveyed. And who do you think you're applying this information to? Well, you take the sample and you apply it to the whole group, the population. In this case, it would have to be all the students in the school. The sample who you ask, 50 students, the population who you care about applying that information to, all the students in the school. It would be too hard to go around and ask every student who their favorite math teacher is. So you might just ask 50, and then when all 50 say Mr. Morrison, they assume that Mr. Morrison is everyone's favorite. So how would you go about doing that? What 50 students would you ask? Would it make sense to go to the I Heart Mr. Morrison fan club and ask those students? Would it make sense as students are in sixth grade in Mrs. Frank's class? No, they wouldn't be good ways to do it. What would be the problem with those? They would be biased. And bias is just another way of saying unfair. It'd be unfair to ask the sixth graders in Miss Frank's class who their favorite math teacher is because they probably only know Miss Frank's and haven't been to school and had other math teachers. The same reason would be unfair in a uh, I Heart Mr. Morrison fan club because they'd be more likely to say Mr. Morrison. The whole point of doing these surveys is to get accurate information. So you don't want it to be unfair. You don't want everyone to uh, be saying the same thing if it's not really true, if it's just true for that small group of students. So you want to make sure that it is a fair survey. So if you were asking um, the first 10 people leaving the movie theater or asked to give their feedback what they thought about the movie, who would, we'll start with the sample be, who's the sample there? That's easy, it's who you ask. So it's the first 10 people leaving. The population, if you're asking people about a movie, who do you really care about? Who's the whole group? That would be everyone who goes to the movies, spelled wrong, movie eyes. And do you think this would be biased? Is this possibly biased? I think it would be, because who are the first 10 people leaving the movie theater? They're probably going to be people who didn't really like the movie, who want to get out of there, who aren't staying for the credits, who might not even stay for the whole thing because they thought it was horrible. So what are they going to tell you? That it probably stunk. If you wait and ask every fifth person or just randomly pick people, you probably get more accurate description of how people really feel about the movie because the people who really liked it might stay till the very end and watch the credits and see if there's any of those funny blooper scenes afterwards and people that hated it are probably just like get me out of here so now we're going to talk about different ways to actually take a survey and there's three that we're going to talk about three different sampling methods the first one is random it's just like winning the lottery everyone has a fair equal chance of being chosen it's like how I pick out popsicle sticks out of the hat or out of the bag. It's like winning the lottery. Everyone has a fair chance. The next one is systematic, where you actually um, have a rule or a formula, like every fifth person coming out of the movie theater or alphabetize everyone's name and then pick every third person. It's so it's according to a rule. 
And the last one that we're going to talk about is stratified. It's like a random random. It's like double random. So if you want to find out information maybe about something in the school, you might randomly pick a classroom and then randomly pick three people inside that classroom. So it's like double random. That would be stratified. Okay, so what sampling method is this? A teacher asks students with birthdays from July to August to go to the board. Is it totally random? Is it double random? Or is there some kind of system? What do you think this would be? Oh, there's a system involved here. So it would be systematic. Next example, the teacher randomly picks names from a hat for students to go to the board to do the next problem. What do you think that is? Is it totally random? Is it double random? Or is it a system? Oh, just one layer of randomness. So that would be a random sample. So I hope this little video helped. We'll talk more about this tomorrow. Have a good night.